Patrick, I appreciate you being on the on the New American Veteran and uh, sharing your story. I mean, especially, um, I know there are men and women out there right now that are still on active duty that are going through some of the things that you went through and they're trying to resolve it themselves. And I mean, you've, you've given pretty good testimony that that's not the way to do it. You got to reach out for help and you got to ask for help. And just out of curiosity, if somebody has an alcohol problem and, and it could be somebody that's serving in the regiment, it could be somebody just out in the regular army, but I'm wondering since you're so recently out, what's the mindset on the inside? If, if a soldier were to go up to their platoon sergeant or their first sergeant or their company commander and say, I got a problem with alcohol, I need to get some help. Is there an atmosphere that, okay, let's go get you the treatment that you need? Or is it a, well, hell, we just don't need you here anymore. Let's get rid of you. So I, um, I'm going to say the initial part of my experience was, was phenomenal. I said I needed help and I got the help that I needed uh, instantly. Um, I, I was being checked up on, you know, and, and that was, you know, that was great for me. I also went in there knowing that I had a problem. Um, now, when I was leaving, uh, some things came to light. And I kind of saw that, I saw that mentality that you're talking about, that stigma that comes along with asking for help. Um, you know, I'm an alcoholic and I know that. I said I needed help because one, I needed help. Uh, I didn't really give a shit how I looked at that point in time. I think I stopped caring about how I looked, but there are many people out there that may care and, and, and worry about what their peers around them uh, would think. I tell you that some things came to light when I came out and I know that that stigma is alive and well, right? Uh, that, that you abused alcohol. So you're, so you're somehow less of a, less of a ranger than I am, or you, you, you know, saying that you needed help is somehow, uh, you know, something that can be used against you negatively in any way, shape or form, whether it's punitive, unpunitive, whatever. Um, and I tell you that the, that the stigma is alive and well, I can tell you that there was three rangers, two rangers when I was in, uh, group counseling sessions after the inpatient program that had minor alcohol related incidents were in command referred into ASAP and then were actually pulled out of ASAP because they had training events to go to. And I think that that mentality right there is what needs to change big time. Um, you know, and, and again, I am not talking down on alcohol and I am definitely not talking down on uh, those that enjoy a drink. Damn, I, I remember, I mean, I, I wish I could, you know, and I may, maybe I could, maybe I could, you know, go have a drink now, have a couple of beers with some buddies, you know, but I know where that path would lead me. I don't want to go back there. Um, I got more help than I could ever ask for uh, from the Ranger Regiment on my, uh, throughout my, my process, but I know damn well that that mentality and that stigma is alive and well, not only in the Ranger Regiment, but, it, but in the Army, you know, and it's, it's something that, that needs to be broke. Um, well, and I think one of the things that that helps with that is when when senior NCOs like you say, hey, I had this issue and I got help and it was a good thing. I think that that message can help others follow that same path. And, you know, I, I see <clears throat> I see the, the spectrum and it's not just in the Ranger Regiment. It's prevalent in other parts of the military as well, where if somebody uh, is having post-traumatic stress or they're having extreme physical pain and they don't want to go to their chain of command and talk about it because of the fear of the stigma of you're less of a soldier. You, you, you can't be here anymore. You've got to go away. Um, that, that, that thing, like you said, is alive and well, but I think the more people that talk about it, the more they realize that just like if, if uh, uh, you're on a, you're on a jump and you, twist your ankle on landing, you, you have to go through some sort of a physical rehabilitation because you injured your ankle. But that doesn't mean that you're less of a soldier or less of a ranger because you, you injured your ankle. I mean, that can happen to anybody. Natural reaction to bending your ankle the wrong way. Um, in a lot of ways, the physical pain, the post-traumatic stress symptoms that come on, th those also are an injury. It's a different kind of an injury but it's an injury nonetheless. And with the right kind of therapy, with the right kind of, you know, you think about physical therapy for your ankle, maybe it's emotional therapy or soul therapy or whatever it is that you want to call it, but it's a therapy that can help that part of you that's damaged heal. And then you can go on and be better, stronger, faster, able to accomplish the mission going forward. And, uh, and that's not an easy thing to do because uh, I know 
from having been there that when that rocket ship is riding, you, you don't want to take time to move people in and off the ship. I mean, you got to go because you, you're on a mission and you got to get there. So, um, hey, I sure appreciate you being on uh, New American Veteran again. Uh, it's an honor to talk to you. Glad we got connected through your transition process. And uh, when I get out to California, I'm going to come look you up. We'll go get a cup of coffee. Sounds like a plan, Carl. Look forward to it. Thank you very much for having me. Hey, Patrick, thank you. You take care. All right, Carl.